of Pegaholics. Today, I have something a little bit different. I have the Cursed Lock, the Nymph NF2. I was in Amsterdam a couple weeks ago, and thanks to Lockheed, I was able to locate a couple of, well, one Nymph 2 keywing. Let's see which one. That's the one. This lock has a reputation of being cursed. The drivers are, when you open it up and you look at them, it's like, it shouldn't be this hard. They are basically a serrated taper and a spool with a taper end. There is a spool in one, three, and five, and that serrated taper are in two, four, and six. The bottom pins, I'll show you the bidding. The bottom pins don't pick like regular bidding because of the way that they sit in the bottom. Not all the pins drop down to the same height. Some of them are higher than others, and we'll show that when we open it up here. I had a real tough time with this lock until after I talked with Georgia Jim. Uh, he said, think of this lock as a challenge lock made by a nymph engineer, which helped a lot. And I had also seen a lot of videos. My favorite was Artichokes uh, on picking the nymph. And he has a great overview video of this and he makes it look easy. And this lock is anything but this. I. The way I've been describing it to everybody is that it is stupidly hard. Uh, it's a blue rated belt lock, but I think it's getting upgraded to purple, which I think is a little more appropriate. I spent five hours progressively pinning this, pulling it apart, looking at it, thinking about it and picking it. And every time you add a pin, it got hard and harder and harder and harder and harder. But then after about five hours, bam, it opened up. And since then, it's been pretty quick. So I'm also going to try and use this as a speed pick as well, too. Um, one of the other things when I was progressively pinning it, I was pi picking it pins up That's the way I'm used to doing it. Once I got to five pins, I flipped it upside down because I was just having a hell of a time and it started to click a little bit better along with uh, when I added the sixth pin, it started to get really well. Um, I have two halves. This is lightly used. I gotta do this the correct way. Key works. When you're speed picking, you have to do a bunch of different things. Um, but turning it upside down really helped. The two halves, this is the outside half. It has a little bit of use. The inside half has no use they both pick so completely different from each other so let's see and i either pick it really quickly or i kind of miss it on these and uh you have to use really heavy tension so this is just my finger resting this is about the tension i put onto this so i'm really really tensioning hard on these for the taper part um this also has a spool but I can bypass it in the pick. There's a couple different ways. As you'll see videos that you're trying to pick to the false set. Um, I can bypass that in this particular lock. So let's give it a go. Oh, I missed it. There's a really a certain sequence here that has to be adhered to. Okay, back up the tension. Yeah, I think I overset that. Yeah, start over again. My spool, the only spool that comes into play is in number five, and I can bypass it by picking it as a second pin. But I have to release tension, get it to click. 
and missed it again. It's different picking when you're talking. I'm going to be quiet and see if I can just pick this. it again. Right before I started the video, I picked it in under 30 seconds. Yeah. Overset. There we go. That was pretty quick. There is no uh, speed pick on this particular lock yet. So that's why I wanted to do it as a speed pick as well too. And that is the Nymph NF2. Let's make some room here. I need that. There picked. Lock it back up. Just a hair more. Come on. There you go. I've had that off a few too many times. Let's bring it in a little bit closer. We do not need a shim on this, but you do need to make sure that you keep the top pins over everything. So this is what I'm talking about. These are the pins at rest. They are all the way down. And that is not what we typically would see in pins and where they rest with bidding like that. The bidding doesn't matter as much as other locks because as you can see where they line up to. Let me pull this all apart and I'll show you what I'm talking about with the top pins. Spool, the serrated, the spool. So 
Rated a spool. That's the only one that I ever get to come into play for the most part. I could pick to it when I was doing it the other way. Come on. Everybody out. Eviction time. Come on. There we go. Showing that everything is in this lock. Let's leave that off. First off, let's do this. Let's get a little more light. So, number six, this is one of the serrated tapers. Both ends are serrated and both ends are tapered. I just have a little click on that high lift. This is also in two where this one actually sits on that serrated. That's one that I do have to pick to a large click. And then again in two, it's just sitting there that way. Then the spools, it's hard to see, but this spool is actually just a hair above sheer. So it doesn't get to the false set. And then when it's in three, it's definitely above the shear. And then in five, it falls below shear. This is the only one that I have to pick if I set it properly to do that. Now the bottom pins look a little bit weird. Come on. Because of this open keyway. Go away. These look a lot like dimple pins. Oh, come on. You're not going to come out. Go backwards. So the bottom pins have that little ledge. So that's the way they ride. What it's done in the plug is there's actually a reduced diameter hole in the bottom because it's such an open keyway. Let's see if it'll focus on that that there's no lid ledge for the pins to ride on. So what they do is they have a larger upper part of the chamber and a smaller diameter in the bottom of the chamber. And so they're all drilled at the same spot and they use different height pins, as you can see, and they all have a different part on how they protrude down. So the pins in five and four and five don't fall down as far as the pin in three. So they actually ride up. So it's like kind of an anti-bump as well, too. Um, but once you get this lock, it's not that bad. But it's stupidly hard to get to that point. So I wanted to share with you all the Nymph NF2. And you can find that on the key. The NF2 Nymph from Asa Abloy. Let's see if I can get it to focus on that. That's going to... Lighting's bad. I lost a lamp. So that's what I have for you this evening, Pickaholics. Have a great evening, and we'll see you on the next one.